Hmm. Yes, I'll, I'll confine myself just to, to one more. And that, that is a figure that I've always found inspiring. Uh, that is the, the figure of Yuan Chuang, uh, the great uh, Chinese Buddhist uh, traveler and uh, translator. Um, he walked all the way from, I think it must have been north, West China, all the way to to northwest India, and from there he found his way down to the holy places. On the way, of course, he he walked all the way through the Gobi Desert, and he did that in search of the Dharma, in search of the sources of the Dharma in India. So he's an example of great resolution determination and courage eh, in pursuit of knowledge of the Dharma. But um, he got back to China safely. I think he took the southern route back by, by sea, which <coughs> of course was another big adventure after having been quite a few years in India. And he devoted the rest of his life to translating Sanskrit texts into Chinese and he's regarded as one of the important masters in the Vijnana Vada school of uh, Mahayana Buddhist philosophy. So he gives us a wonderful example in two respects uh, as an intrepid traveler and searcher after the Dharma and also as a translator. Um, not only as a translator in the literal sense perhaps because he was translating from Sanskrit to Chinese and these are very different languages. Uh, I must also add that his translations, so I understand, are regarded as more scholarly than those of Kumarajiva, but uh, Kumarajivas are regarded as having greater literary merit and uh, therefore they are more popular. Mm? But Yuan Chuang is popular with the scholars. Mm. So two reasons for admiring uh, Yuan Chuang and being inspired uh, by his life and work.